Hi, this is James with Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to look at one of my most anticipated expansions of the year, and that's going to be Core Quest Keep On Questing. This is a one to four player game, and this has been designed by Cora and Dan Hughes. In this game, you're going to be playing through adventures and trying to survive uh, with your ragtag bunch of characters, and it's going to go through an entire story through the adventure. But wait! This added a campaign. Now you can play through multiple adventures and level up your character in between adventure and have all the fun of having like a campaign style uh, adventure for kids, which I think is really cool. There's some new monsters, there's some new heroes, there's some new cool components. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead down to the table. I'm going to show you what comes with this game, what the different changes are, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. <music> All right, so this is Core Quest. Keep on questing, and you get a ton of new stuff with this game. You're going to get four new story tiles. So these story tiles are used to tell the story uh, throughout the game through the different missions that you have in the game, or you can expand upon them and use these with your own homebrew uh, missions that you create. In addition to that, you're also going to uh, get uh, 20 new environment tiles here uh, for the game, uh, which are thematic and neat for uh, playing through. So you get 20 new ones here. Uh, these are primarily for this expansion, but like I said, you can make your own story and place these in there too. Uh, you're gonna get some new monsters. So you're gonna get a new healthy stack of monsters that come with this expansion. You're gonna have the skeleton, You'll, and again, um, I'm showing you this is actually a tough side. Uh, that you have the regular side on here. So here, your ghost uh, can move through but not stop on squares occupied by heroes is immune to all status effects. This is a pretty powerful guy. You can get the gigantic spider. In the base game, you had a spider. Now you have a gigantic spider. And at the start of every enemy phase, spawn two spiders on two different empty squares adjacent to it. So you're going to get lots of spiders all over the place unless you take care of this one. You have the Goblin King. In the base game, you had the Goblin. Now you have the Goblin King. And again, these are going to be bosses too, by the way, because you can see the health of 14 and 12. And then the tough side, they get even more health. Uh, but the Goblin King here, uh, while the Goblin King standee is on the dungeon, all other goblins roll an extra white die uh, to attack. Really bad for... Uh, if you have a lot of goblins on the board. Here's the Slamopus. The Slamopus always targets the hero with the line of sight with the lowest health, using its actions to move towards them if it's not in range. If there is a draw, the players choose. Oh, and we have this Snow Cone Monster. Makes a single separate attack against each hero in the dungeon. Does not need to be in range or line of sight. Oh, that's a dangerous snow cone. Look at the range there is like infinite. Uh, here we have a robot here. So robot, these are going to be the two normal uh, monsters that you're going to have in this expansion here. The first one's a robot. It's just a three health. Nothing special for movement and a red and white eye that moves. And it has a range of two. And then we have the skeleton with one health, two movement, oh, two white dice, and a range of two. So those are the two monsters you get. And of course, you get all these little lovely standees with the cool art on them uh, for them. Uh, but you also are going to get some really cool new heroes. And this is on the determined side. So this is the regular side for them. You're going to have the uh, healer cat here uh, with six health, five movements, and uh, it has use one full action to heal one point of damage from adjacent hero. Really cool. You're going to have Rebecca uh, Goodhammer uh, do one damage to each adjacent hero enemy. This uses one full action and it has eight health, which is a pretty tough cookie there with four movement. Um, this one here, whoops, this was a non-determined side. You're going to have the Archer Lady uh, roll one extra red dice to attack this turn, which is a special ability. And uh, you're going to have eight health, four movement, and a red die. Uh, plus, don't forget, you get the starting weapon. So you have a bow in this one. Uh, you'd have a body cat, and you have a maul with this one. You also have Big Guy. Big Guy has 12 health, which is pretty impressive. At the start of any time... Uh, at any time, sorry, 
if another hero anywhere in the dungeon takes damage, you may take that damage instead of them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then you have Witch Boy, which has eight health, really good health for movement. Uh, swap the positions of any two ca other characters, hero enemy, who are both within your line of sight. So that's pretty cool special abilities, and that's pretty cool um, characters they have. And of course, you'll have these standees for them too, and the standee bases. Uh, in addition to this, you're going to have your purse here. You're going to be using this for the coins that come in the game as you collect them. It's going to be a collective purse because everyone shares in this game. You're going to have other tokens here. Uh, the tokens for the cooldown uh, timer there for when the uh, players use their action. And you have other tokens that come into effect in the game uh, when you can level up. So that's a new thing that's with this game. You can now level up your characters, which is really cool. And uh, they can go through a quest. And there's two different quests that come in this game. Uh, you also get this really cool uh, map of uh, West Orkshire uh, and all the different little cool elements with it. I will mention that uh, there's a puzzle that you can get that is the, of this that's really cool. I highly recommend it. My kids had a lot of fun with it. And then it has like little ads on the back there. They're just fun. So that's pretty cool. You also get these bags here. These bags are actually going to be what you store your characters in between missions when you're leveling them up and stuff. Uh, you're going to get three curse cards. Uh, these will come into play uh, in the game here if you want to do a hard mode. Uh, you also are going to get a nice stack of these cards, which is going to give you uh, different abilities here. So different helmet, different things that you can do. These runs are, some of them are special. So these will count as your special. So if you use them, you'll put your guy on the countdown timer there and you can't use them again until then. Uh, some of these are permanent abilities that you can get. These are different skills that you can level up in the game. And uh, these permanent ones just happen all the time. So you see the little P there for permanent. Um, but if it's a special, then it'll have that little S there. So that's these cards in there. And there's a good healthy amount of these cards in the game. So a lot of different things you can pick from uh, as special equipment that you can get. So those are really cool. Uh, you get a couple more treasures here. So there's some cool treasures that you can get in the game. These are cool too. Another nice little stack of these items that you can get. Some of these are going to be starting items for some of the players, which is really cool. And I'm oh, sorry, these are going to be starting items right here. So a couple different starting items you can get. All right, so what's special with this expansion other than some cool new components and heroes and monsters that you can get in this? Well, now you can play a campaign if you want. Now keep in mind, you can play any of these missions individually. You don't have to play a campaign, but it does give you the ability to play a campaign. And if you do, you can level up between campaigns there, or between missions, sorry. Uh, so campaigns, there's two different ones that can be here. There's a spotter's guide to the dungeon and the curse of hoods. So there are two different campaigns you can play in the game. Each uh, campaign is played over a series of five linked adventures. Uh, where you keep the same heroes and level them up. So with that said, it's very important that when you, if you're going to do a campaign there, you're going to have all the kids agree which character they're going to play for the entire campaign as they won't be able to switch those out. Uh, you can also uh, keep your favorite items from treasures you find and use them in future adventures. So you can with things you've gained between the dungeons, you can also use in the next dungeon. You don't have to play all the adventures in the same sitting. Uh, the, you can use those uh, bags over there to store the components in between. Uh, that's what the special color bags are for in the game. Uh, and there's a, four, a couple extra steps to complete when you are setting up and finishing adventures when you're playing a campaign. So again, the most important things, you're gonna choose four heroes, but your heroes that you pick are going to be the heroes that you use for the entire campaign. So make sure you like them uh, before you start out. Uh, then you're going to read out the campaign introduction to all the players and read the special campaign rules. These rules apply to every adventure within the campaign. So each of the two campaigns have overarching rules that will occur for those campaigns. 
At the start of each adventure in the campaign, you're going to look at the moon at the map and choose which of the adventures in either a spotter's guide to the dungeon or the curse of hoods you wish to go on and then you're going to set up based on that adventure or mission uh, gather your items and have any level up cards uh, that you may have gained in previous venture apply any curses apply uh, so you have some of these curses that you may be able to pick up which will go over in a little bit you would apply those and that's it you're ready to do your campaign now after winning each campaign so the campaigns are going to be let's see i've got the book out here so here's the spotter guide to the dungeon here and you're going to read this out this is going to be the special rules for the campaign and here's going to be the quests that you can go on or ventures you can go on uh, for this campaign and uh, I, yeah, I mean, just go through in order and they'll tell a story, which is really cool. Setup, if you watch the base vi our base video, it shows you how to do the setup. Uh, this is going to be very important. This is going to how you go through the setup. You can also, Dan and Cora wrote, did a good how to play video also uh, that you could watch if you don't watch ours. So that's that. So uh, you're going to go through that. And after you winning each of the adventures in the campaign, you're gonna reset your heroes. You're gonna regain all their health in between adventures and any status effects that they gained, uh, whether it's tangled or sticky or whatever, get removed. You're gonna level up your heroes. You may spend coins. So these are the coins that you can get, uh, which will be in your purse here. And you can use those um, to uh, send one of your uh, heroes to adventure school to level up. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, you can choose the items to keep. You may keep up to eight items uh, shared, however, between all the heroes. Now, your starting item does count, so every hero does have a starting item. You should have, a, every hero should have an item, and those should be evenly uh, distributed, so those things to keep in mind. Store your heroes. If you're not going to be playing the next uh, adventure, you're going to be storing your heroes in those bags. Uh, gain curses. Uh, check to see if you gained any new curses. Uh, place all the curses cards you've gained in one of the heroes bags so that'll go in there now we'll go over curses in a minute uh, save remaining coins put any coins just put them in anyone's bag just to hold on to them doesn't matter they're shared uh, and you can record process uh, progress now in the rule book there's going to be this section on the back that you can photocopy that's going to help you score the progress for each of your quests, which is really cool, what you have on there and all that fun stuff. You can photocopy them. I will say, though, that it's much easier just to go online to their website and print those. So I'd highly recommend doing that instead. Now, that's if you win a campaign or win an adventure in a campaign. Now, what happens if you lose an adventure in a campaign? If you lose an adventure in a campaign, you don't have to start the whole campaign again. You just redo that individual adventure. You do not get to level up or keep items or coins you found during your adventure that you lost. However, you do keep all items, cards, and unspent coins from the campaign adventures you have previously won. So that's another really important reason why you're going to be using uh, that sheet on there so you can keep track of those. So if you do lose one of the adventures, you can reset yourself. So basically what happens if you lose a venture, you just reset to what you had before. All right, so a couple clarifications or notes on keeping items between uh, adventures. In a campaign, you're able to keep some of the items you found during your, an adventure and carry them over to the next one. However, due to an outrageously high cost of locker space in town of hoods, heroes are limited to how many items they can keep. An adventure party can only keep eight items. So you'll have to make sure that you uh, in, uh, agree on which items you keep. You should always have at least items for each of the heroes. Um, always default to keeping the starting items that's very important uh, so when in doubt keep the starting item because you want to make sure um, that you have enough dice rolls and stuff uh, to do your damage in those dungeons uh, but you don't have to there's nothing forcing you to do that um, additionally to that uh, you should like I said keep them all even on there but try to keep like I said everyone be able to do a decent amount of dungeon damage and uh, try to keep the items like on uh, theme with the characters too, which is also fun. But you don't have to do any of that. You can do whatever you want. Technically, if a person doesn't have an item, they still have that roll of die. It's just not advisable. All right, so clarification on curse cards. Curse cards increase the difficulty of a campaign 
as your heroes level up. So you don't have to use them, but if you want to increase the difficulty, you can use curse cards. They are drawn at random from the curse deck, at, uh, and once drawn, they will apply to every adventure in the campaign from then on forward. So like this one here, these monsters are going to get plus one health, these monsters are going to get plus one health, and these monster type are going to get plus one health. So they're going to make those enemies tougher. Uh, in a standard game, curse cards are drawn after winning your second and fourth adventures. This means that the fifth adventure will have two curse cards in effect. If you want to increase the difficulty of a campaign, you can draw a curse card after winning your second, third, and fourth adventure. Uh, curse cards give enemies more health. Uh, when playing the adventure, we suggest placing the curse cards on top of the enemy card. So when the enemy card this enemy card types out, you're going to place this on top there to show that they're always plus one. So those are curse cards. Now, one of the most important things you can do in the game is you can level up. And these are the cards you're going to be using to level up. And on these cards, uh, they're going to have all sorts of different abilities they can use. Again, this is going to be a permanent and or here's the uh, ones that you have to use your special ability for. So they're limited. Uh, permanents are ongoing. Uh, so, in a campaign, heroes are able to improve their skills and abilities by leveling up. They do this by collecting coins during their adventures and then spending them to pay for training at the Hood's Adventure School. Leveling up can, leveled ups can never be swapped, so I can never swap these between adventurers ever. Uh, during the adventure, whenever a hero gains an item for the first time, uh, for searching treasure chests or uncovering a story dungeon card, but not from doing a swap uh, with another hero or another starting equipment card, count the number of coins on its front and put them uh, that many coins in the supply, which is going to be your purse. So uh, these ones here will have little coins down on here. So each these will be coins that you will get uh, the first time you get these items and they'll go into this purse here. And this is collectively shared. So again, when you're going on adventures, so that's going to be how you're going to get your coins, uh, you're going to be spending these coins uh, to send your uh, adventures to, these, to the school to get um, the uh, uh, special ability cards. And they're going to cost six coins to be able to do that. Now, this has to be evenly distributed. So if I'm going to spend six coins, uh, to give uh, the first player uh, one of these cards. That player can't get a second one until everyone else has one. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, so you're going to want to uh, pick who you're going to have first and so on, but everyone's going to eventually have even number, of, well, hopefully everyone's going to have uh, one of these cool level up cards by the end. So that's basically how leveling up. You're going to gain these coins during the adventure through gaining your items. You're going to go into your purse. Then you can spend your purse money at the end of the adventure there if you've won to gain new level up cards. All right, so the last thing we're going to go over is the new status effects that come with it. So you're going to be Entangled and Enchanted. Uh, so Entangled, uh, you're going to place the Entangled token on the player or monster who has become Entangled. Uh, an entangled hero is not able to make any move, attack, or search actions until, or, uh, until they or an adjacent hero spend one full action to disentangle them. So basically, that's going to hold them up for one thing. An entangled enemy cannot move or attack until it is disentangled. An enemy will always use its next full action to free itself. So basically, what this is going to do is take away an action from a hero or a monster. Is basically what happens with it. So either way, someone loses an action when you get entangled. Uh, the other one is going to be enchanted. So you can enchant a hero or an enemy. If an enemy comes enchanted, they immediately fall under the control of the enchanter for one single full action. Once they have taken this action, they will no longer be enchanted. Taking an action whilst they were enchanted does not prevent the hero or enemy from acting as usual for their two full actions. If a hero enchants an enemy, they immediately make an enemy perform a full action normally available to that enemy. So the enemy can either do an attack or a movement. So the, you can make an enemy attack another enemy. If the enemy enchants a hero, they immediately make that hero take one full action. The enchanted hero will attack the closest or other hero 
who is within range of line of sight using the enchanted hero's attack die on the side of their hero card that is currently displayed, plus uh, whatever player considers the best weapon to be carrying. Uh, if a hero is not within range of another hero, they will try, they'll use that full action to move closest to the closest hero. So basically in the way the enchanted works is once the monster is enchanted, it's going to try to attack another monster or you're going to move it. When a hero is enchanted, it's going to attack the closest hero with its best weapon. Uh, or if there's no hero within range, it's going to move towards the closest hero. So that's basically how enchanted works. And finally, with these two quests that you have in there, uh, that you can go, two campaigns that you can go on, there's a lot of adventures in here. And there's a even more replayability in this game. Uh, and even if you go through two of these, and like I said in the base game uh, review there, you can also do, uh, once you go through that, you can make the game harder. So you can add the curses, add more curses, or you can, you can put the monsters on their tough side. So... You can go through these campaigns multiple times and increasing the difficulty makes it the game feel different. So there's a lot, a ton of replayability in this expansion. In addition to that, you can use these components to make up your own uh, adventures and potentially your own campaign, which is really cool. Uh, all these have uh, narrations uh, that you can listen to uh, that available on their app, uh, which the QR code is in this book here that you can um, link to go to that. Uh, so that's really cool. So you can have narrated uh, uh, campaigns. Uh, but that's all that you get with keep on core quest, keep on questing. Let's go ahead back up to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on this game. So that was core quest, keep on questing. Component quality, great same superb quality that they had in the base game there so component quality really great love the art love everything about it now this game actually gave me a little bit of a nostalgia i don't know if they did it on purpose but with hero quest the first expansion at least i believe it was the first expansion was an ice expansion with like ice monsters and stuff like that and this has the feel of like an ice expansion i know there's a lot of fun stuff in there but still it gave me the idea that and i really really like caught on to that plus Love the base game, really, really like, in my opinion, the best dungeon diving kids game there is, period. There is nothing even close to it. Uh, and we've played a lot of them. Uh, this one is just the best. It is really good. It has art that draws the kids in. Uh, my kids love that. Uh, and the new things that this added aren't that much more complicated. So if you've played the base game on there, just saying, hey, we're going to be able to make your, your character more powerful between adventures. Not much. You just get a new item. New item on there when you level up is either going to be like a special item uh, where you can fire it off once and then it has to uh, refresh. Or it's going to be an ongoing effect. Uh, so not a whole bunch of extra layer on there. You'll read it off the kid. The kid will know it's there. And you can help them with it if they're younger, uh, just to make sure that they remember it's there, make sure uh, they remember what to do when they use it, and that sort of thing. Um, but that's not too much different than the special ability that is on the character that they've already been used to uh, when they trigger it off, they have to do that cooldown thing for. So not much on there. The two new abilities are pretty straightforward. Uh, entangled, you can just explain when they go on there. They just lose an action, basically, is all it is, whether it's a monster or a hero. Uh, and then the enchanted super simple. They just, if someone's enchanted, they attack. So if a hero is enchanted, they attack. If a monster is enchanted, they attack. So not a whole lot on there, but it does add so many more uh, adventures to the game. You don't have to play the mission or you don't have to play the, um, the quest. You can play just the, the adventures and have tons of fun. I uh, really appreciate this. This is just more good stuff for the game with a couple extra layers that you can add on when the kids uh, get old enough or feel they're old enough to do the next thing. Like you know, they're, like, they're hankering for like more in it. You can do the campaigns, uh, which can be a lot of fun. In addition, this gives you more components you can use to make up your own adventures and your own characters and your own uh, stories for the Avengers. Just really good overall if you like core quests. 
I highly recommend uh, this expansion. I actually consider this like an essential expansion if you like Horror Quest because it just gives you more and you can continue on playing. If you do play it, this is an expansion you need to have. It's not gonna uh, change anything too drastically. Uh, like I said, just those, those things and it just gives you more adventures, which is awesome. And more story elements and again, like the base game, all these story elements can be are narrated by Dan Hughes, so you can uh, load them up on the website or uh, play them on your phone, and you don't have to actually talk through any of this. You can just listen to uh, the narration, which I think is really cool. Overall, um, I love the base game. The base game went into my collection. The expansion is going to go in my collection. Um, not very many games end up in my collection. This game is just that good. Like I said, I think this is the best period uh kids dungeon uh crawl style game there is and that's my thoughts on core quest keep on questing thank you for watching